Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad from The Magic Brad Show, and I'm doing another interview today. I'm going to bring him on in just a moment, but I met him on that uh, platform that uh, Zuckerberg guy created called Facebook, <laughs> and he's got a very interesting business, and it's all about money, and uh, it's interesting that on Facebook, they've got friends, and he's got money friends, and here he is. His name is Brandon Duff. You there, Brandon? I am here, Brad. Thank you so much. The Mr. Magic Brad. I uh, I love I get to talk to you because you one, you're just magical. But two, I just we've been talking for a little bit now, and it's just so amazing to hear your story and so much value that you give every single day. Of you know, I followed your YouTube channel, I followed your Facebook, and it's just you know, a really a, an honor to jump on here with you and talk to you. Well, I appreciate those kudos, and uh, you're not you're not wearing your mustache. I, I am not. I am not Mr. Monopoly today. Uh, I actually need to reorder one because you don't realize how hard it is to eat with that thing on. And it gets so dirty and gross. So I actually need to order another one because it's uh, I had to trash that. So, But I have everything else and I will be um, actually making some kind of webinar, I'm guessing, with that. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. You can get one that is like a mask so you can wear it into the stores and stuff. <laughs> yes, I can get my little... Uh, um, what is the, the mask, I guess, the face mask, and then add it, and it will it will go with the costume. I definitely for, agree. For those that don't know, what we're talking about is the Monopoly game, and the guy that has the big giant mustache, and Brandon is very good at branding himself. He did a little caricature of himself as that person who's a recognizable person, and Monopoly's all about money. Right. And uh, you've got your uh, company, The Money Friends, which I think is pretty cool. I yeah, pretty cool. I appreciate that. I, um, I, I'm a... In, I'm really an investor, so I uh, own real estate. I own ten rental units, and so I thought, you know, what better way to brand myself but to be Mr. Moneybags and uh, or uh, and the Uncle uh, Pennywise, I think is is his other name. But uh, I figured, why not brand myself as Mr. Monopoly because that is all about trading your houses up to hotels, and so you know, I figured I'd create that branding for me, and it, it's been working quite well. No, how old are you? About I am thirty-four, actually. Okay, so I'm sixty-three, so kind of half. Yeah, about, about less than but, half. But you younger generation, I'm always fascinated with it because some I, I met you on Facebook, which is kind of unusual. Maybe you're past the. But my my wife's son, he's like twenty-three, twenty-five, or something like that. He calls it fake book, and he doesn't get on it and things. And I think there's still a place for Facebook. I mean, it's still working. Oh but, yeah, I think that. Um, well, Facebook has a lot more advantages than the typical platform. They have things called groups, mm -hmm. and uh, you're able to find your perfect audience in all these groups and able to leverage those groups. People ha that have already created these groups have done all the hard work for you to bring all these people into kind of your ecosystem. And so you're able to leverage their groups to uh, find people that are like-minded and you're able to leverage that versus some of these other platforms that are more for entertainment or for uh, whatever it is that you do on those platforms. Yeah, it's a, it's interesting because stuff like TikTok or the Instagram where you got the real short little videos, of course you've got thousands and thousands of followers because they're only spending three seconds on the video. Right. So I like the engagement kind of stuff, like stuff like this, where you can actually have a conversation and have a cadence in the voice and emotion. Right. And, right. and these, I mean, like TikTok, you can't go live. Uh, you can't. Um, I thought they do have that. I thought they do have it. I don't know. They they might. I don't think they do have like a live stream, but they might. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not on it. Um, and it's just, it's more, you have to think of the demographic. Obviously, it's kind of stretching out, but just there's so many more benefits of being on in my opinion facebook but i'm on multiple platforms that all point to one area and we talked about this uh off the show but there's so much different technology that you can actually use to stream to these different platforms without having to worry about um being on one platform or the other they kind of just shoot off to um all the different platforms and hit them all at the same time like this one around right now Streamyard. this works yes. good I like Jesus. how simple it is. It, it is, is very simple. simple. A younger generation, it's just a couple of young kids that created it. And their their uh, mission is to keep it very simple, which I love. 
rather than getting into all that weird stuff that, I mean, the younger generation understands all these little check boxes and stuff and I, my brain goes foggy with it. So what, what uh, moved you into, why did you choose real estate to be involved with as far as uh, the investing in the money and the time? Yeah. So before I was actually a personal trainer, I, um, kind of helped business owners to kind of level up their mindset, level up their bodies so they can perform uh, better in their businesses that were doing very well. And this allowed them to take their business to that next level because they were able to have more energy throughout the day. They were able to get more stuff done throughout the day, which equated to creating more wealth for them. And I realized that all of them had, were, I mean, they were all coming in depending on the client, but anywhere between 4 a.m. and 9, 10 a.m. And I was like, how are these people coming in at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and staying for an hour, an hour and a half and not having to be at work? And it's because they had money that was making them more money. And they all had something very much in common, which was they all owned real estate. It allowed them to diversify their portfolio. It allowed them to um, leverage uh, real estate to have money work for them, get cash flow, tax benefits, all sorts of different things. So, um, and I didn't want to be that 55 year old trainer who was still training, um, you know, trying to help people level up their game. And I just felt like being a trainer, uh, it just wasn't something that you, you kind of do when you're younger. And it kind of, it was funny because a lot of people were like, oh, do you even have a real job? Like, you know, they were, they were kind of making fun of me because, um, you know, I had like this hobby in a sense that I was making money from. And so I realized that I was exchanging time for money. And in doing so, I was not able, I only had a certain amount of time in the day that I could actually make money. And if I was working 12 hours a day, I was very tired at the end of the day and I didn't want to do anything. So I had to kind of leverage something to uh, kind of get me out of that box in a sense, because I can only make so much money during the day. So if I was able to leverage some kind of other asset, then I could um, make more money and allow me to do more things, help more people, uh, just change more lives. So there's a lot of things in the real estate world. So the, I mean, you can be a real estate agent or you could, uh, you know, right. Commercial versus residential. Are, are you like a fixer flipper or are you primarily just investor? Or? Uh, I, I don't have a real estate license. Um, I just didn't, I felt like if I got a real estate license, uh, there's just much more disclosures you have to include when you're a real estate agent or a real estate broker. So I'm just an investor and I just do boring passive income. So I uh, actually have uh, 10 rental units and I have a property manager who handles all my property. Uh, they're actually all in Las Vegas and I live in Texas. And when I was investing, I was actually living in California. So uh, we are a buy and hold investor. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated with the concept of real estate only because it, it, to me, it seems like a very secure thing because in, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, security, yeah. is you need, you know, you got to have food and water and got a roof over your head. Right. Even, uh, for your business, you know, you can't just be outside. Right, exactly. And it's it's something that is always going to be there. It's a physical asset. And uh, for instance, when you were talking about Zuckerberg the other day, if, for instance, Facebook disappeared overnight, I would still have my real estate investments, investments creating wealth for me every single day. Right. And right. so that's why I invest in real estate too. We also do digital real estate for software, but uh, a lot of my money comes from just leveraging uh, real estate investments. I want to, had one of those questions in my head and then it disappeared and I forgot what it was. Oh, um, what do you think is going to happen with the whole real estate world with this pandemic thing? Because you know, a lot of people are kicking the can down the road, they're not able to pay the rent, but it goes into the mortgage and then it goes into the bank. And Yeah, so um, a lot of people, have if you look at last year's numbers there's only been a one percent difference in people that couldn't afford their rent or their mortgage so it hasn't substantially changed um but obviously there is more money in the market with uh the stimulus checks with unemployment so we will see in the next uh few months i know that um all of our tenants have been paying on time and we haven't had any issues um but uh, las vegas actually extended the um what is it called when you kick someone out of the, the house um 
when you evict them, they extend the eviction process where you can't evict anyone, uh, for, I believe, until the end of October. So it hasn't really, we haven't had to evict anyone, um, nor can we at this point, but all of our tenants have been uh, paying on time. And so uh, at this moment, I see no issues, but it just goes back to understanding leverage. And if you don't over leverage yourself and say, for instance, all my tenants couldn't afford uh, the more uh, the rent, then I would still make enough money to cover all of uh, the mortgages, and I would never be upside down or not upside down, but unable to pay that because um, I'm not over leveraged and I I make sure that I'm secure in my finances. So you think there's going to be a lot of great deals out there because people are going to have to let go of their houses and. So if I was a real estate investor and I was looking to get on some good deals, I would definitely look at uh, people in forbearance. Um, there is a good amount of people that are in forbearance. If you look at that 1% increase, that's a couple, couple thousand people or a couple, I think a million people or so. I don't know the numbers exactly, but they're obviously anywhere you go, there is going to be a deal and you can find deals. You just need to look out for them. And if you have a deal, money is always going to flow to that deal. So uh, definitely look at forbearances if you're looking at uh, getting something where you can do like a subject to where you take over someone's mortgage, uh, you do cash for keys. It just depends on kind of what your strategy is. Yeah, it's a weird world. I, I bought a house and then we got out of it too early and then I started doing apartments and now we're in an apartment and now the wife wanna, wanna, kind of wants to do a house. But I really like this apartment living where you have to do anything. Yeah, I mean, I, we live in an apartment. Uh, we, my, so my wife is a property manager. She manages a, uh, a lease up, which is they went from new construction built up 300 units and she manages this a luxury apartment. So I go down every morning, I get my Starbucks coffee that I don't have to pay for. They have this big machine that I get to pick. And we have a, a guy who comes and picks up all of our trash every every day. We just put our trash outside. So it's like a, like a little hotel in a sense. And so uh, I love that because we don't have to pay property tax. We don't have to pay for maintenance. It's just our monthly more, uh, rent every single month. But we get a, a substantial discount, which allows us to reinvest our money. And so um, it is very nice and very cush. But, uh, you know, we did buy our dream house, um, which is new construction. It's actually going to be ready in April. So in a few months here. And so when that time comes, then I will uh, have all the extra things that I need to pay for, like property tax and um, repairs and maintenance and uh, lawn care and all that fun stuff. So um, I just got to keep increasing what I make. I was talking to my wife because we're trying to find the dream house, you know, unless you're building new, it's hard right. to find that dream house. So I thought, why don't we just buy a lot and then just start building it in, mo in modular type, just create a little livable space with a bathroom and a kitchen and a living room, and then add on and create a turret with a with a conservatory on the other side and then create a, you know, build it in little blocks. I'm yeah. a monopoly board. You can add houses and hotels and stuff. Yeah, you, you know, definitely can do that. You just, uh, it, it's a much cheaper um, to build your own house. Um, it obviously, it just takes longer. You have to get permits and all that. I've never actually built new construction. So I don't know what goes into having to pull all the permits and what the time is, but uh, it's definitely can, it's doable. Well, being an entrepreneur, what I would do is I'd create like a TV show or something and have someone build it and it'd be a creative thing. And then I would bring in someone else to do that and they can get the glory out of it and they can put together all my permits and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you just, you just, I just run around with my phone and take pictures of my house being built. Right. And it, I mean, there's so many shows like that already. I mean, there's, uh, I believe a, a show called uh, uh, Flipping 101 uh, with Tarek. And I believe he does kind of that where he finds someone who has a house that needs to be renovated and he kind of suggests what they should do. And I, I, I never watched it, but it kind of was on shortly last night. My wife watches all the, the house flipping shows because we just bought a house. So she likes to get ideas. And uh, they were talking about this, this flipper couple that was living in this house kind of hired Turek to do whatever he does. And he, instead of actually flipping the house, he suggested to make a addition, kind of what you were looking to do and add an addition to make the house a three bedroom, two bath, and just continuously add on to it so that they can rent that out and make more money. And uh, it was very fascinating. It was like a two minute clip that I saw, but um, it seems right up kind of what you were looking to do.
Well, it's the idea is created a, a neat experience with it. Right, an experience. Want to watch it. And I love that. They would tune in at a certain time and see, oh, look, they're putting in the plumbing or whatever. Right. And it's and funny because some chaos too. You got to have like a pipe break or something and look at all. They, the always, they always do that. It's funny because I, I watch, I, I'm reading and I, uh, well, my wife watches this flip, flip or flop shows and, uh, I'm like, come on, you did that on purpose. Like we literally <laughs> set like this bar down so it could fall through the window and crack the window so that you could be like, oh, we need to put new windows in and blah, blah, blah. So and yeah. there's a timeline and stuff for it. They're, they got crunch time going to create that right. drama. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's, it's <laughs> makes for good television. That's right. Well, I kind of keep these kind of tight and slow and then short so people can consume it all. If someone wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? How do they maybe become a money friend? Definitely. So uh, my website's called themoneyfriends.com. Um, you can look up Brandon Duff. Uh, the easiest way is probably my trainer, Brandon. Like I said, I was a trainer before. So uh, if they went on facebook.com forward slash my trainer, Brandon, or they went to say, for instance, uh, Instagram, uh, same kind of thing. They can look up my hashtag, my trainer, Brandon. That's probably the easiest way to uh, get a hold of me. And I will be beaming this up to YouTube and I will put the links in YouTube so there's the longevity of it. So if you're doing this in 20 years, who knows? Somebody might find something. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know. we are in the digital age now and who knows? It might just be in uh, an implant with the neural link and uh, they would have that information instantly beamed into their brain. So uh, right, all sorts of great stuff. Scan your facial recognition and go, there he is. I found him. Right, exactly. I mean, we already have that. So all sorts of cool things. I'm going to put you in the green room. If you want to stick around, we can have a chat. Other than that, I'm going to beam it up to the universe. I appreciate you taking time. Brandon Duff. Thanks you. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate it. It was a great uh, discussion, and I look forward to uh, watching it. Okay, thank you. So that was our friend Brandon Duff, the Monopoly man, and uh, he is a real estate investor. And uh, it's an interesting thing that you don't really need all the, the – credentials and stuff for being a real estate investor. You can uh, just get smart and make it happen. So it's been the Magic Brad Show. I appreciate you taking the time to be with me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well, be good, be safe, be nice, be kind. Peace, love, and happiness. There we go. We're done.